let's start here. Okay. So um, this project is called Transparent Walls and I um, was supported here by Manu and also by Lucas Wetzel and by Cedric Allier, who I just met last week for the first time. So excited to tell you about the story of this project. Um, it all started with this paper that Manu shared in our course about the dense pose and uh, about uh, um, getting human pose estimations from the Wi-Fi signal. And I find that, found that initially actually quite scary. Um, but that um, scare changed to excitement when Manu mentioned the potential of using this for detecting humans or animals in earthquake debris. And as we as we know here, every second counts and having ways of bringing existing technology to this space to find people as quickly as possible would be amazing. I want to add here that it I still want to find people who actually have experienced this or who are working on retrieving people in these kind of situations. I live at this place where no earthquakes <laughs> happen. I don't think I've ever actually felt one. So this is, the, I, I hope to um, get new team members who can then test prototypes. In order to get a better idea of this initial idea of using Wi-Fi, there is a lot of uh, research to go through and I've only scraped the surface, I think. Um, these are from like, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, spanning to like now using deep learning methods. And uh, they have very different approaches here. Some use, for example, the uh, fact that humans can move to uh, reduce or to um, eliminate the background signals, that's something we can't do. But there are some common factors that uh, I've just uh, put together that, that came from the ideas of these publications. One is that the precision of the location is quite important. Then, of course, the whole uh, type that like, of the location of the domain is important. So what type of debris are we actually working with? There are is, um, options to use different wavelengths or signal strength. There's also just some uh, signal strength, strength available. And it very much depends also how precise we can receive a signal and which part of the signal we can receive. There is an option to have a number of input and output devices. There was this idea to potentially have receivers that can crawl into the debris to get more receiver devices. And all of this changes how well a uh, solution could work. And the idea now is to simulate this using these parameters to get something that is the, the um, like in, the, in the simulation, you can work with all of the available parameters and the result. And then with the experiment, you can kind of go from both sides to find a working configuration. And this is the plan. From the experiment side, I have trouble even calling this a prototype. So I wrote this on, um, I wrote this Android app that just displays the signal strength of the Wi-Fi. I have no idea why it's negative. That's just how it is. And uh, last week I was at a hackathon where I then walked around with this and just trying to locate the router basically. And what I got from this was that uh, this is not quite, not very continuous, the kind of signal that you get. So the values jump in a quite big time um, there's quite some time between different measurements and you don't get a, get like nice ways in between. So this is quite sparse. I'm not sure this will get us anywhere. I think one needs a signal that is closer to the actual raw data of the antenna. And I'm not sure if Android is able to provide that. So maybe as in the other publications that I found, we actually need different antennas, but that's just the first thought I think other ideas for experiments would be to have the router and the phone and place objects in between see how the values change if they change another idea would be to because we might actually not be able in an earthquake degree to be on the left and right of something it might be below us so another experiment would be to to see when the when the 
surroundings below the two people who would measure this, for example, changes if the values would change. On the simulation front, this is what I've done so far. The first one on the left here, this is a very simple ray tracing approach where I'm just randomly placing objects with different absorption rates. So here black is the is there's no absorption happening here. That's basically where you could walk around. And the uh, lighter it becomes, the higher the absorption rate is. Then in this simulation, I'm measuring the absorption along a ray. And I do this, let's say 20,000 times a lot. I then have tried different strategies of overlaying these kind of measurements and you can reconstruct at least parts of this room. But this assumes that you get a measurement on a ray along like this line, which is, has nothing to do with the reality because much of the signal actually gets reflected. On some of the publications, they called it the flash, which is the flash of walls, which is much bigger than like, the actual uh, signal that gets uh, transmitted. And this is why these EM simulators are super helpful. They they can uh, they they exist and they can be used to create this whole room of um, simulated signal transmissions. I used MEEP here. This is actually happening in 3D. It's just visualized in 2D. There are random objects here again. For some reason here the color is different. So black is, has a higher absorption and white has a lower absorption. And you see the signal here, and you also see how it's actually reflected along this line. Now, this is just the simulation result. This is not yet a way of, um, of estimating anything based on the signal. This would be the next step. And it's actually the most interesting step, I think. And it's uh, just, I, I'm, I've just explored possibilities for now. So what we see here are imaging techniques from microscopy or in the, in the, um, imaging domain of science where we can, I think, get quite some inspiration because their volumes are observed with different techniques from different angles and then the image is reconstructed. So for example, from tomography, I think that we could potentially use existing solutions. Uh, last uh, week, at, well, I was at the Geneva Research Campus, and I met Cedric Aye there. He is an um, optics engineer, and he knew much more about all of this. And he had also ideas to use the concept of time reversal, which, if I understand that correctly, is that you have you have multiple sources sending out a signal, and then you have one receiver. If if the receiver plays back the the added signals of all of these, they would appear the same way again at the sources. Mine was uh, nodding so over. Was yeah, yeah. No, I think wrong. That's, yeah, that's the that's the beauty of sound. <laughs> yeah. So Cedric had the idea to play around with this. He could say much more about the scribble. Uh, I need to talk to him about this a bit more to understand it fully. Another domain that could be super helpful is the gaming industry. Their 3D also needs to be rendered quickly. And what they do there is in this publication, which is from NVIDIA, they use so-called nerves, which are also um, models. There's, these are um, neural models that they train on a specific scenario. So in comparison to usual deep learning models that where you try to uh, generalize over many data sets here, you would take, for example, pictures, single 2D images, and then you would reconstruct the 3D scene by fitting onto these images, by fitting a model onto these images and from this reconstructing the 3D scene. They use also ray tracing for this, which is why I seem to think it doesn't fit exactly, but it still feels like there is something to potentially quickly uh, train something because that's the cool thing about this in comparison to deep learning and you get these reconstructions in a couple of seconds. I just wanted to mention this as well. So here's a rough idea of how to continue with the simulation. First, we would start with the full signal and try to reconstruct the architecture potentially from the full signal um, that you would get from the simulation. Then we could take single points of this, these um, simulation signals. And then ideally, if we can just use the signal strength, that would come even closer to 
the Android prototype. And on the training side, there are different ways of potentially like reconstructing the architecture, then looking at if we can visualize object attributes, see if we can classify humans and maybe even detect a heartbeat. We could also think of detecting phones which are in the debris with the people. These could be objects like if they are looking for a Wi-Fi station, for example. These are just a couple of ideas. Now we're not just looking for humans in debris, we are also looking for people to actually join the team. So if you feel inspired and like this would be something for you, please contact me. Thank you. Oh, that was fantastic. Uh, questions, comments? I guess maybe one thing that I just wanted to mention, Deborah, is we had talked a little bit about the code base for the previous papers. So basically, amongst all of those implementations, none of them have an open code base. I, because I would be curious them, what the yeah. raw signal looks like. Because so they, the, they have for sure screenshots of the raw signal in there. I see, but there I is saw, no actual yeah. raw signal repository, for example, or a database. I, I have, there are so many papers that I haven't looked in detail at, so I, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, because it's I think that would be valuable. That, something. that would be valuable to get an estimation first of yeah. just, uh, from a time series type of a problem. How, yeah. how long do you have to be observing a signal and how many total receivers gives rise to what resolution? Because often enough in imaging, we have a good idea of how many receivers uh, to put to see what resolution we want to construct it back at. And here it's, yeah, it's not so obvious to me. And I think, yeah, going back and looking at some of their configuration, even if their code is not accessible, is still useful. Like, was yeah, that all constructed sure. out of a single transmitter receiver? What was their scheme? How did they design their experiments? What were the kinds of caveats that come in into because clearly the big difference between what has been done and what we're proposing is the complexity of the geometry is much much higher yeah. uh, and so I think just getting back of the envelope estimates of how the resolution might degrade how does that scale with the total number of reflections yeah, I got. I was surprised that I had to run the simulation quite long to actually have a whole signal of the full mm -hmm. situation that I generated. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's multiple bounces probably. Yeah. And then you were finally able to do that in the right uh, frequency domain, right? So that was an EM simulation. It was at the right frequency. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a fantastic tool. Looks like it's designed for people to optimize where they should put their routers. Yeah, and I'm not sure, but maybe one can really also use this as an infinite amount of training data, I guess, source for endless training data, basically, potentially. Yeah, yeah you can just generate it, yeah. Um, other comments, questions? Yeah, I just has a few. When, Devra, you did a great job. Uh, Thank you. Mike, my question how i think there is absorption of the signal because you talk about wi-fi and refraction yes. especially with this uh, dense complex geometry as told by bro Manu. so that uh, i think the receiver must be uh, many one not just one how you how you treat that uh, sort of in in the in the simulation you can specify these kind of parameters like for absorption and reflection if i think i got it right um do you mean that or maybe yes yeah yeah, yeah because uh, generally in 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 uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, propagation there is a component of line of sight and there is a many component of uh, uh, multi-path uh, resolution and has and has a model for that if you use uh, wi-fi to pick carry 
so that this uh, this propagation uh, has absorption component, has a reflection component, has a multipass component. It is not just like uh, uh, when you picturing using uh, light uh, and, and 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 lenses. Okay, I I will check the simulation library for sure because this is not fully my, do my domain, so I need to read up on this a bit more. I was just yeah. using it quite naively and honestly with uh, the help of ChatGPT, which was explaining me these kind of like basic uh, component names that it used. And um, I was just believing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one thread to think about is that just there are lots of open source EM simulators that will essentially uh, uh, do any complex geometries at this point, uh, doing certain class of simple experiments on showing... Uh, For verifying them? Yeah, both verifying. And I think what I was thinking a little bit about was going back to that original question of how does signal dynamics change as a function of uh, complexity of geometry? This is just an idea right now is, uh, you know, think about of the wall of mirrors or the hall of mirrors. There are these uh, rooms you can enter where there are infinite of you. And imagine a type of a parametric geometry that we generate that exponentially increases the number of reflections to see when does the when do things start cutting off in some sense and getting an intuition from that would be interesting um that's where i also so why i was so curious about these fitting these functions or models because mm -hmm. it sounds like something that could match this quite well, potentially. Yeah. Because no, of it's... these repetitive signals, like, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I think, yeah, let's switch.